Hello, everyone. Welcome into the View House Centennial for my favorite Monday Live. We got Mark Rycroft in the house. It's been too long. I think last time I got you in was maybe August. I don't know. But boy, twists and turns this season, uh, Riker. This has been, I just feel like I don't know what apps team we're going to get each night. How would you characterize as someone who's there day in, day out? How do you characterize the season? Well, it's good to be back here for one, yeah. Romy. One, I feel so far down on your list of stars oh, that you get on the show no. now. Come on. We save this for special days. Yeah, you've blown up, but I'm glad it's it's hockey season now. It's basketball yeah. time. But the season has been very interesting. Yeah. Very inconsistent. You have hot runs. And then, like right now, we're in a bit of a cold run. Yeah. And then you look at Valanchuskin jumping back on the ice today and losing and get back Sam Girard. And, mm -hmm. you know, it almost feels like, and we were talking off camera, that the regular season is important this year, mm -hmm. but it's not the be-all, end-all. Right. It's how good are we going to become game one of the playoffs. I feel like that's the mentality of the team. Mm -hmm. And where are you finish in the standings? Yeah, they want to win the Central, of course. But if they don't finish first, it's okay. It's okay. Because are all the horses healthy and together come round one? And that's kind of all that matters for this team. And you talk about you don't finish first, it's okay. But in the past, especially in that cup run, I mean, they won more games on the road th than they did at home. <laughs> Of course, they've been struggling on the road this year as of late. Uh, what do you make of the road struggles? It's hard to figure, and, and we went in detail on this. The Avs won the last or the first four road games of the season yeah. to hit 15 in a row on the road, which was a National Hockey League record. Right. Since then, they went 13 and 14 and like two. Yeah. How does that even make <laughs> sense, right? We're all of a sudden that ball are in. Like, you can't lose. Yeah. Tough one against Toronto two nights ago, of course. Mm -hmm. We won't talk about that. But either way, it has been a, a turning of the tides, a different season from last year to this. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's a good thing, because that series against Seattle, to lose out in Game 7 last year was mm -hmm. tough. Yeah. And I think the team has grown a lot. They learned a lot from just how hard a regular season is. And you can see the intensities there. But once again, it's who really cares about the regular yeah. season? Get in, get a good standing best you can. But it's the real season that starts well, that third week of April, and that's all that really matters. Yeah, we can't wait. We're like, chop, chop, yeah, chop. <laughs> but in the interim, you get a huge boost. Val Nachushkin's back. I mean, there is, there's no mistake. There's, he's, this is a different team when Val is and isn't on this team. What are the biggest things that Val brings that makes this team a contender? If you look throughout the National Hockey League and you try and find guys that are six foot four, incredible skaters, mm -hmm. he was on pace for 40 goals. Still, I had 13 power play goals. That still leads the team. He's dominant on the power play. I don't know who else in the league. Oh, and he's in the prime of his age at 27 years old. Mm -hmm. There's no match for that. Yeah. So for Val to come back in is, is just massive. Yeah. And he's loved by his teammates. And that's the one thing, McKinnon especially, right? Uh, two years ago in the finals, he had five goals mm -hmm. against Tampa Bay Lightning. You think that's important? Mm -hmm. He was probably that close to winning MVP over Kale McCart. Yeah. That's how good Val Nachushkin is. But players don't want to play against him. Mm -hmm. He's just... He's a puck eater out there. Yeah. And uh, having him back in the lineup, it just makes me smile. Makes yeah. everybody smile here that's an Avs fan. Unless uh, you're on the other side. You don't oh, want to go up against Torture against on against the Val. other side. Other guy you don't want to go up against is Nathan McKinnon, who yes. has somehow gotten better. I mean, just playing out of his mind. What do you, if you, I had to say, how how did Nate get better this year? What do you point to? I think he just fine-tunes himself off the ice, yeah. most importantly. So he comes in, given his body and mind, the absolute best chance to succeed. And then he has his natural gifts and everything to just play the game. And you just, it's a different level. We call it video game speed. Yes. You know, it's like you got the super boost button on Nintendo. He has that in real life. And we watch it, you know, every game in practice, it, it doesn't seem real. Yeah. And when he goes, he can control a game scoring, but he also can, he can draw three penalties in a game. And all of a sudden, you don't think about that aspect of it. Yeah. Or the other team tries to match up certain guys against him, and that throws them all out of rhythm. So... When Nathan McKinnon is cooking, nobody touches him. And, he, yep. and one other, you know, nerd stat here, he's got the third highest points per game in the playoffs in NHL history. He goes Gretzky, it. Lemieux, Nathan McKinnon, postseason scoring. What else can you say? Uh, nothing. That was that's nerdy, why, eh? that's why we, nerdy. That's why we brought you in here, eh? That's why we brought <laughs> hey, you in here. throw one of those in there. Uh, <laughs> what a great night. We got Mark Rycroft in the house. You're so busy. We got I'm to intense. finally. I'm intense. I feel intense up here I right I love now, it. Romy. Welcome back into the View House Centennial for the best edition of Xfinity Money Live. We got Mark Rycroft in the house for a game of Factor Fiction. You ready? 
This makes me nervous. I like it. If you're I got to think fast. I'm not good at thinking fast. If you're new here, uh, I will give Mark a statement. He's got to tell me if it's fact or fiction. <laughs> so this is the one that everybody wants to know. Fact or fiction? Gabe Landeskog will be back this postseason. I don't know. Oh, 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 what? I don't know if that's legal. I don't know. I'm going neutral. Oh, I, don't... I don't know. Nobody knows. I don't know if he knows. Okay. It's a day-by-day -day event. He's skating with the team. He's rolling. I can tell you. I want to say that. Yes, we want to <laughs> say fact. He's out there. You know, we had the, uh, the charity brunch yesterday, and Gabe got up there and spoke. And you just forget his presence. Yeah. Like, when he's there, he just commands respect. And he's born with that. That's yep. Gabe, and he's grown it to, to hoisting the Stanley Cup. But I just don't know. Mm -hmm. I want to say fact. But the honest answer is, let's just hope. Because if you throw Gabe Landeskog in this lineup, Oh, oh my goodness. Oh. All right, let it's me. It's the best top six in the NHL, oh, uncontested. It. So I want to say that. The truth is, I don't know. <laughs> no, no. All right, okay, let me ask you a follow up to that. Yeah. If he does come back, what would be a reasonable expectation? Because I assume that there would have to be some sort of a buildup. It would be high. And the thing with the way that Gabe plays, because he's a physical guy, yeah. he can come out and just be an absolute menace while he kind of hones his game in. Yeah. He doesn't depend on just stick skills or just being fast or making great passes. He can come out and be a bit of a bully, yeah. hone his game in, and then you know work his way up to the top yeah. line. That's how I see it. I love it. All right, this one, this one is, uh, I love this one. I think, we, I think we've dabbled with this one before. Fact or fiction, yeah. Nathan McKinnon will go down as the best Avs player ever. <laughs> I know, it's so tough. <laughs> okay. Does Joe sign it's, your checks? Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> so here's the thing, it's too early to tell. Oh. Right? Because You Joe, are going full politician today. Well, the thing is, I know, and I don't yeah, even like doing like, that like going it, down like the it. middle. But these are, did you stay up all night writing these last They're, night? Yes. Or what? Oh, yeah. So, you know, you're talking Olympic gold for Joe. Yeah. You're talking two Stanley Cups. You're talking a Conn Smythe. You're talking a Hart Trophy. All these things that McKinnon could win this year. But right now, Super Joe is still the man. Now, Joe Sackick played almost 1,400 games. Mm -hmm. McKinnon's at, I think, 750. Yeah. So we only got half a career to look at. Let's see how the second half goes. But is he going to be the second best? Third best, where's Forsberg sitting there time frame? You know the best part about this question is we're actually talking about yes. McKinnon, Forsberg, Sackett. Because we never thought the days of Sackett and Forsberg would be touched. Yes. And now all of a sudden it's, is he better? Uh -huh. That's the cool part. Will his number be retired? That's a fact. <laughs> you know, like you say, what a time to be alive. Truly, what oh, a time. Best. Because you can actually debate it. Yes. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And we're, we're so lucky to be able to do it just to find more generational players. And, you know, forget about Makar and Miko Rantanen and Devontae's and now Val's back, you know. A lot of juice. So much fun. Yes. A lot of juice. Uh, we got to take a break, unfortunately, right now. They'll send it back over to Michael Spencer. This is why I kicked Michael Spencer in the news. So I could cover the ads during <laughs> yeah. this time Michael's period. looking good, fit, I and dapper. I could Don't use a little he? more color. It's a lot of blue for me, but overall, not bad. Well, I love <laughs> taking uh, tips from Mike Rycroft. No doubt about that. Why don't we tell Rycroft to get off the fence, would you? Hey, All right, Michael, thank you so much. And, of course, the fans, they got a lot of questions for Riker, too. It's time now for the People Want to Know. People Want to Know brought to you by... Common Spirit, official healthcare partner of the Denver Broncos and champions for the communities we serve. Sarah wants to know if you got any secret talents. <laughs> what does that even mean? I don't know. Like secret talents? Yeah. No. No. No, okay. I don't. I uh, Everything about me is just right out there. Okay. That's part of me. I like that. I don't have any secrets. I like that. No, uh, and I can't juggle to oh, be one. Yeah. You know, me I don't have any of that. I can shank a golf ball with the best of them. Okay. There's a secret That's talent. a talent. I like it. You can grow a mullet. That yeah. is a talent. Yeah. And Romy asks, the mullet is coming back, folks. It's coming back. Be ready. So, look, I'm not a betting woman, but I would bet on the Avs to win the cup now that the mullet is officially coming back. That's mullet why power, last year mullet was Mullet magic, the moule. The moule. Whatever you want to call moule. it. The Yes. <laughs> Mull over some mullet nicknames <laughs> while we take a break. Because coming up next, we got to talk to Rycroft about, uh, well, let's see, what are the more memorable moments of your broadcast? Oh, dear. Uh, you might know where I'm going. You might not. Stick around. That's it. And of course, this is always one of the best episodes of the season when we get Mark Rycroft on. You know, I don't get to be with you nearly enough like Mark Mosier does, but, Moj. you know, I oh. also don't do things <laughs> like Moj. Now I know where this is going. Like putting my, my <laughs> chew cup in the wrong spot. Can you take us through what seemed like one of the more harrowing moments in oh, your life? So Moj's cup got onto my side, and I never looked down because I'm watching the game. And right there, I'm like, <laughs> oh, no, because it felt like pulling it up. 
Moe thinks I'm choking right now, but he's got to stay calling the game. How good is that? That's a pro. He's looking at me. <laughs> he thinks I got a burger down my esophagus or something. I don't know. And I'm grabbing every cup I can find just to wash my mouth out, like scope times a thousand, right? And I'm just trying to get that taste, that, you know, that chew, smell, taste, right? Of whatever it Thankfully, is. Thankfully, I don't, but well, yeah. You know, maybe you kissed the guy that was chewing one yeah. time. Like, you know how that is. It's disgusting. And then I just, you know, I just didn't want to get any of Moja's goodies, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the truth of this. God love Moj. Yeah. He didn't want this tape released. <laughs> so our, our boss, Matt Kroll, who's just the best, we get going on, on the radio show, you know, with Vic and, and Moj. And he's like, we got to release this. It's got to get released. So then we got on the air. Vic pressured him and Brett Kane, and boom, it's on the air. Oh. Moj has regretted it ever since, but we love you for putting it out there, buddy. Uh, we love it it's so much. It's almost made us famous again. Oh, it, yeah. it absolutely has. The best duo in hockey. Rycroft, thank you so much it's for joining us tonight. my pleasure. Anytime. Thanks, Roman. It's Robbie. been such a treat, guys. We'll see you tonight at 10 o'clock. <laughs>